parliamentary updates. The 2017 theme for International Women's Day is Be Bold for Change. This year, the United Nations asked the world to help forge a better working world, a more inclusive, gender-equal world. Celebrated on March 8th every year, International Women's Day means different things to different people, but the global focus on equality and celebration is clear. With its beginnings in the early 1900s, it was the suffragettes who started International Women's Day with the first officially named International Women's Day event being held in 1911. A symposium for parliamentarians of Trinidad and Tobago was held at the Office of the Parliament on March 6th. The attendees were welcomed by Vice President of the Senate, Senator Nigel De Freitas, who encouraged men to be active in the change process. In 2017, the issue of violence against women continues to plague our nation. Therefore, action is not a choice, but a necessity. So let us join forces in eradicating all forms of violence against our women. We do not want our women to be silenced by violence, but to be empowered by our support, not bounded by the fear of man, but empowered by our unbounded and unconditional love. Two participants shared their thoughts on International Women's Day and gender-based violence. Member for Tobago East, Ayana Webster-Roy, recalled a conversation with another regional parliamentarian. When I left St. Lucia, I left with a commitment to encourage our Honorable House to work towards establishing a woman's parliamentary caucus, reason being. We recognize that even though we may come from different divides, when it comes at looking at issues pertaining to women, there must come a time we put aside our party differences, put aside our own personal differences, and examine the issues as women, because we are the voice of those who are outside. We are the voice for the voiceless. And that stood out for me in St. Lucia, because while we were there, there was a particular incident in another Caribbean region where a female parliamentarian, because she decided to stand against what was the norm and to represent the voice of the people who elected her at a parliamentary debate. She was being ridiculed, harassed, to the point where she might have had some death um, threats. And I remember one of the opposition members, one of, someone who was not a colleague, saying to us, I'm going to reach out to her. This is another woman, this is a sister, and I need to be her voice of support. Senator Paul Richards, too, shared on the historical points of the topic saying that the feminist movement played a vital role in the movement towards gender parity. One of the tipping points in the feminist movement came when women were able to take control through contraceptives of their reproductive rights and decisions. At that point, there was a shift in terms of women having, women having to decide, well, I'm going to get pregnant or I'm not going to get pregnant, and that had serious implications for their careers, their contribution to family, and more importantly, their economic independence. Because before that, in many instances, in most instances around the world, women were dependent on men for their economic sustenance, especially when it came to family lives. Fast forward into 2017 and the sharp rise in gender-based violence, Senator Richards posited that men were not prepared for the shift in roles that women now play in society. I don't see many societies where a lot of emphasis is placed on a different kind of socialization of males to deal with this new paradigm where women are now equal academic, intellectual, economic partners in the workplace, in society in general. And men are having a tough time dealing with that. It was then on to the symposium segment. Facilitator Tony Ann Bradba gave an overview of the discussions. I would like to find out what is going on, and I think the research has to be done. What is happening in our society that is leading our young men and young women to murder? Because when you look at the perpetrators for both the murders of men, the 92 which include the seven women, and the murders of women, the perpetrators are mainly men. And this is not because men are 
naturally more violent or terrible than women. There's something happening in our societies, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But I want to couch it in something that is a priority for government. Because often when we speak about gender equality and ending violence against women, it seems like we're speaking something out about something that is external to economic growth, something that is external to development. We have to focus on the hard issues. We have to get the deficits in order for some countries. I live in Barbados right now, and it's very interesting what's going on there. So we can't discuss this issue of gender equality and violence against women, because we need to get the book straight first. So what I hope to do over the next hour is show how they cross and get us thinking a bit more about what kind of policies and programs and legislation has to be in place to address the ways in which they cross. Ms. Broadbus stressed the need for healthy interpersonal relationships and the good examples that must be seen at home. You are not trying to tell your son, don't beat her because you'll go to jail, clearly. But that is a reality. Don't beat her because you will go to jail. But you're also to trying to teach our men and our women how to have healthy ways in which to disagree. That is not something you can teach just in school. It's what they see in the homes. It's what they see in Parliament. It's how they see all of us disagree that they start to replicate. So it is that internalized and interpersonal that people look at and adopt. International Women's Day continues to be a powerful platform globally that unifies tenacity and drives action for gender parity while celebrating the social, cultural, economic and political achievements of women. This year we ask you to be bold for change. Stay tuned for more parliamentary updates. For more information, visit our website at www.ttparliament.org and follow us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Parliamentary Updates